Hey YouTube, welcome to a new series called Data Structures in TypeScript. The first question you might ask is why learn data structures? Everyone around me is telling me to learn something called data structures and algorithms and I really don't understand the point because you know I'm creating web applications in React and Express and I don't really have the scenarios or situations where I need to know the different types of data structures. Should I really learn them? The answer is yes, you should. It's similar to eating vegetables. You don't need vegetables to live. You can survive on potatoes and water, but why would you do that? You want to thrive in life. You want to eat and be healthy and eat your vegetables. So similarly in programming and computer science and coding, you want to learn your algorithms and data structures. So the first benefit in learning data structures is to become a better engineer. There is a famous book called Algorithms Plus Data Structures Equals Programs, and in this series, we're going to focus on the data structures part of that equation. Data structures are, one, necessary for powerful and efficient algorithms, which we'll cover in the next series. So one data structure that's common in the, in the world is a graph data structure. A graph is like a graph of friends. And once you model your data in this graph-like data structure, you have access to very powerful algorithms like pathfinding algorithms and Dijkstra's algorithm and breadth first search and depth first search. So that's the first benefit. It unlocks a bunch of powerful and efficient algorithms that are only available to us once we're able to wrangle and massage our data in the way that the algorithm algorithms expect. And we'll cover all of those algorithms in the next series. This whole series is about the data structures. The second benefit of data structures is to manage and organize our data. So whether you know it or not, you're using data structures every single day. So the first picture is a graph of you and your connections to your friends. And this is a data structure that social networks like Facebook and let's say Instagram use to model friend relationships. You have the cir circle, you have the center node in dark blue as yourself, and you have these connections or edges to other nodes or vertices. You know, you have Rick, Jamie, and Heather, and yeah. The second example is a data structure called a queue. A queue is used when you need to model some sort of printing like service because you need to model a line, right? You need to have the first person enter the queue be the first person to be serviced. So if I'm the first person that hits print, and in this example, in this picture, we have these printing tasks in this queue, then I should be the first person to have access to that printer. So this is like a queue data structure. The last example is a data structure called a stack. So this is like a stack of plates. The last one that you put on the stack is the first one you put out. So we call this last in, first out, whereas the queue is first in, first out. And a stack is very common in applications as well. Imagine your browser history. The last page that you access is the first one that you want access to when you hit the back button. So you can think of your, your plates as browser pages, as web pages, and the last plate that I went on, let's say right now I'm on Google, but the last page I went on to was Gmail. I want that last page to be the first one to surface when I click the, the back button, right? So this is a last in, first out data structure called a stack. So you're using data structures every day already. So that covers the first benefit of why you should learn data structures. They allow you to become a better engineer because you're better able to model and reason about your data in ways that one, you can create algorithm, algorithms for, and two, you can you know model real world relationships and scenarios in your code like that. The second benefit that we're gonna cover is to pass technical interviews. Big companies will interview you on data structures and algorithms. So Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google from the picture, those type of companies will 100% test you on data structures and algorithms because when you're an engineer there, you, your code needs to be 100% performant because their, service, their services get used by millions of users every single day. So seconds and percentages really count on this scale. Even if you're not interested in working for a big company like Fang, I would even say it's more common nowadays for mid-sized companies um, to expect candidates and, and, and interviewees to have a solid understanding of computer science theory and data structures and algorithms because they know too that it's just like eating your vegetables. They allow you to better, they allow you to reason about your code in a more sophisticated and clean way. The reason why making a series of data structures in TypeScript 
is because I strongly believe from personal experience that beginners should stick with one language. When I first started coding, I jumped around a lot. I started with Python and then I went into JavaScript because I wanted to create web apps. And then I went into Ruby, Ruby and, and Rails because I saw that it was a bit more opinionated. And then from school, learning CS in my fr uh, first year, second year classes, I did some functional program with Racket and then Java and then C and then C++. And I guess you could say that now I have a well-rounded knowledge of program languages, but I, if I could go back, I wish I would start with one because when you start with one, you should. it's very beneficial that you learn all the program concepts in that one language. And then after, once you become proficient and at the expert level with one language, you can transfer your knowledge from that one language to others very easily because usually programming concepts are, are very easily transferable, at least between C-like languages like C, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, they're all similar and they have the same concepts and paradigms. If you're doing a complete paradigm shift between, let's say, object-oriented programming and functional programming, then of course, some of the concepts that you learn in one might not be transfer transferable to the other. But in general, if you stick with one language and learn it thoroughly, then I really believe that you'll get the most benefit, in my opinion. So that's why this whole channel and this series is focused on JavaScript and TypeScript specifically. So with that, if you're learning Python or you're learning Java, then I actually recommend for you to check out another series that focuses on your specific language. But before you go ahead and do that, I'm gonna give you a quick pitch on why learning JavaScript might be better for you. And the main reason why is because JavaScript is found everywhere. You can create some front-end web applications with frameworks like React and Vue. And then on your back end, you have Node and Express, and now you have Dino. So why not just add data structures and algorithms to your TypeScript slash JavaScript arsenal? The last thing I'll note is that it is true that JavaScript hides some concepts that are important to you when you're going about your data structures and algorithms journey. But I will cover these to make sure you understand the difference when implementing data structures in a higher level language like JavaScript or something more lower level like C++ or Java. So that's it for the introduction and some motivation on why you should learn data structures specifically in TypeScript. And I'm very excited for this series because I know I'm gonna learn a lot from teaching and I hope you can learn something as well. So I'll see you in the next video.